Hey, my name is Dan, I used to work in a dealership and now I teach fine folks like you how not to get fucked when buying a car. This video is something really funny that I've seen. There's gonna be a good teaching point, but uh, it, just, just watch it. Guys, just watch it with me. There's gonna be a really good point that this guy makes and I wanna go over it with you. I don't think they made it on purpose, like super on purpose. They're like, oh, this is so smart, you know, but check this out. This is really funny and there's good learning here. Hi, I'm Roger here with a regular reminder of what cars look like because you're gonna have to buy one of these eventually, even if you currently have one. And you're gonna have to buy this car from me, a legally mandated middleman who buys up cars and resells them for almost no profit unless I screw you over, which I will. I will have to disagree with that. I think there's shit on a profit, but let's keep going. But don't worry, if you don't like that, you can go to another dealer run by another middleman who's basically just me again, Roger. Whether you want a car powered by exploding dinosaurs. Exploding dinosaurs. Oh, who writes this stuff? Exploding dinosaurs. <laughs> Fuck, I need that guy. I need that guy to be running my, my shit. So one powered by lightning, Come on down and buy one. That's not a request. Unlike every other purchase in your life, you can't buy this tiny rolling metal house online for a set price. No. Spin balloons. <laughs> the, sir, this car has a lot of circles. This is the one you wouldn't be holding on to. <laughs> you have to come across town to where I work, even though you don't have your own tiny rolling metal house to get you here. Then you'll negotiate a price with me, a person who spends every minute of every day getting better at negotiating. If you think, I, I'm really trying to make a solid point here. This guy said some, but he should have like put more emphasis on it. If you think you're gonna come to a dealership and you're gonna bust some kind of karate magic negotiation moves, you're a black belt negotiator. You think you're gonna over negotiate a salesman, a professional salesman who has thousands of hours of fucking negotiation, thousands of hours, you're not his first fucking customer. Uh, manager in the dealership, used car manager, new car manager, there's a manager of the dealership, the general manager, he can easily pop into any negotiation, uh, finance manager, and the internet ma manager. And they can also switch a salesman uh, on you if that, if that salesman is feeling a little weak or he doesn't think he's getting through you. You think you're gonna over negotiate seven professional people. Guys, think about this. You already lost. You, would, you, would you hunt a bear in a fucking cave? Then why would you go to a dealership to negotiate? That's their fucking territory. That's their home. You do not hunt a bear in a cave, right? Unless you wanna get fucking eaten. You don't go to a car dealership to negotiate. It's just simple as that. If you go to a car dealership, negotiate, if, if the salesman is telling, sorry, you're gonna have to come in to get the best possible pricing. You already lost, you're on their territory. It's like the bear is telling you, come on in buddy. Yeah, bring, bring, bring your professional negotiating friend with you, absolutely. Come bring your dad with you. He knows all about negotiating. He, he, he's gonna negotiate so hard. Guys, let's be honest, the only way you're gonna get a good deal on the car is by shopping, 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 shopping dealerships. You have to contact at least 50 dealerships. I contact over 100 dealerships when I'm looking for a car for a customer. Over 100 dealerships. You you have to contact at least half of that. At least 50. Guys, if you don't contact a lot of dealerships, how are you gonna get the best possible deal? The definition of best possible deal means you have to choose out of something. You have to you have to have some options to choose. If you're going to three dealerships, that's not any choices. That is not a choice out of three dealerships, four dealerships. Whoa, that's a lot. Guys, you have to pit the dealerships against each other, number one. Then you have to make sure that you're contacting as many dealerships as you can. And then you have to make sure that you're shopping for a car nationwide. You guys, don't worry about shipping a car. The amount of money you're gonna save on the car is gonna be worth you shipping the car or you even flying in and getting the car or you driving and picking up the car. It's gonna be worth it. And once you promise to give me all of your lots of money now or all of your less money now plus more money regularly for a long, long time, 
You'll drive your enclosed chair off my lot. Enclosed chair. Ugh. Who writes this? <laughs> and on to busy crumbling roads at the speed of basically whatever you want. But don't worry. You and everyone else learned driving skills for the first and last time at age 15 from someone almost qualified to teach high school gym. This is probably one of the, I mean, it's one of the worst things. People think they send their kids to drive in school. They come out with a driver's license. The government says you can drive now. Congratulations, you have government's permission because you, because you know, we, we, we can't take a shit without government's permission. Sir, can I please drive my car? But that's another topic. People come out of these driving schools, right? Young drivers, and I'm not, I'm, I am not about to bash on young drivers. Do not think I'm a bashing on young drivers. I'm, I'm trying to bash people who teach these schools. They, they, there's nothing taught on how to drive in snow, how to handle a car on, on wet, slippery road, how to uh, hill climb on a car on a slippery road, how to brake properly if somebody jumps out, or how to drive on the highway at nighttime when there's fucking deers, fucking um, coyotes, and God knows what else is on the road. How pick up or not to pick up hitchhikers. I, I think that's something that should be taught in a fucking uh, driving school. None of the stuff that actually is a, like really, really, really important is being taught. They'll teach you when to use turn signals. You can't turn here. They teach a really like, just super, super, super basic, but young drivers should not be relying on their basic knowledge of rules. They're, they're, they're learning rules of how to drive. They don't know how to professionally drive. If it was my will, I mean, if I was teaching, you know, younger me, I would send myself to a fucking rally school to learn how to drive over there. If you can learn how to handle a car at 90 miles an hour, I think you can handle it at fucking 45. Just an example. So the best thing you can do is learn car driving with a professional car driver who can tell you if somebody breaks in front of you, it's slippery on the road, it's either uh, rainy or it's snow, what do you do? How, how do you brake? How do you make sure you avoid the accident? Or how do you maybe get into an accident with less damage to yourself? How, how to properly get into a car accident? None of that stuff is being taught in driving schools. And trust me, you're gonna love driving a car. Let me rephrase that. You're gonna buy a car. This car, or this car. Oh, buy any car. I'm judged entirely by sales volume. I also have an incentive to sell you something broken because our dealership's number one profit stream is our service department. Very, very, very true. Number one and number two money makers in, in car dealerships service department and um, insurance sales and warranty sales. Th those two departments are, it depends which, you know, on the dealership and how good the finance manager is. It, these two are number, number one and two. Car sales is number three. Be careful when you're going to finance office. Be careful when you're going through service department over at the dealerships. They, they'll, they'll overcharge you and sell you shit just to sell it to you. So get that even more money of yours ready to give to us. And in the event you break your car while you're in it, rest assured we made a guy who sort of looks like you out of materials you're not made of and practiced beating the hell out of him a bunch of times. Anyway, you probably want to get back to watching sports or action movies from three years ago or other TV aimed at adult males. But before you do, consider texting in a brand new traveling pollution machine from me, Raj. Just stop by my 20,000 square feet of water, aggregate, and cement that's been flattened out and dried by the side of a highway and make a major purchase you won't know the outcome of until far too late today. That is, that is so true. Most people buy cars, they don't know how long they're gonna keep it, why they're even buying it, what are they gonna do afterwards? Guys, simple question. Why, are, why do you need a car? To go to work? Why else? To get groceries? Why else? To take your kids uh, places? Why else? To, to, to show off? To impress people that you have a $40,000 loan. Because you know, not everybody can get a $40,000 loan. Not everybody can have a, 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 a two-door uh, fucking car. No, woo, not everybody. It, it's so fucking exclusive. Guys, let, let's be real. If you're, I'm talking guys as in dudes. Dudes, if you think you're gonna impress anybody, I mean anybody, 
with a $40,000 loan that you have on the car, maybe in Africa, maybe in Russia, maybe in fucking China you can. Not in America, buddy. Anybody can do that. That shit ain't fucking impressive. Just being honest with you. Also, buying this muscle car won't fix your penis, but you think it will because we want you to. Last one, I cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> that is so, okay, okay. First, huge shout out to uh, this guy. He's super fucking funny. I, lo I love this channel. I watch it sometimes, it's pretty funny. Here's the, here's the main point um, that I, get, that I wanna make. Guys, if you, if you do not have the full concept of car buying, if you don't understand how dealerships make money, how, how they're selling cars to you, what tactics and strategies they're using to you. If you do not understand how your car is, is being priced, new or used, how your trading works, you have no business buying a car. Keep watching videos on this channel. I go over all that stuff, all of it. If you have questions, there's a phone number below this video. Give me a call or shoot me a text. Huge thank you for watching this video. Click here to subscribe, watch one of those two videos and click the share button below the video. Did you enjoy the video? Did you find it useful? Do you think you're gonna save some money with it? Absolutely you will. Share this video on Facebook with somebody else. This is Dan Strong with 60 Minute Car. I'm signing out and I'll see you in another video.